set of these tiny drills is pretty invaluable for dealing with things like this. This set I think is from 1.1 to 2 millimeters. These are carbide bits. They're designed for uh, circuit boards, I believe. But I'm only going through this screw. We should be able to hopefully get into that. If I can get this drill bit centered up, this is not really enough to get a center. It's not like you can get a center drill on there and uh, drill it. I need to get it started. And the top, what I've got here, this, the edge I've got is not exactly level. That's it. Gone. Gone, gone, gone. And there's still thread in there, so we're good. Okay, well there's our screw. It's pretty tiny, considerably smaller than my finger. And the drill bit just goes through that hole and no more. That's a 1.1 millimeter drill bit. So that very likely that thread was 1.2 millimeters, as I said. Okay. Well, that's that little drama out the way. I can be able to find, I'll be able to find another screw for that, and uh, means I'll be able to get the door back on. I won't bother trying to get that screw out of the bottom. I will fit that door exactly as it is. I've got a technique for doing that. I have my organ donor for that catch for the front of the camera. So all I need to do is get that unscrewed and lift out that catch. I don't have a tailor-made tool to do this, a button of that size, but these pliers should do the job. Is it going to fight all the way? That's better. Those are the parts I want. Let's see if it fits. There's no obvious problem there. A bit of lubrication and put that in place. touch of synthetic grease will probably do the trick. I want some in the fork where it goes onto that rivet and just some at the back face of it where it runs against the camera body. I've got to lift this spring up, slide that tab underneath it like that, get that centered up and run the button on. Which may or may not go smoothly. Oh, just noticed something here. Take that back out. The bottom of the case is pushed out at this point. It's not, it's not flat. I'm going to put a straight edge on there. It's bent and it's bent at this point. So it's going to need a little touch of hammer, I think, in order to fix that. Oh, most definitely. Right there. Put a little mark there. Pumping time. That's pretty good.
yep, that's good. That's all that's required. Now I can put that bracket back in place. Now see if I can get this uh, button screwed in. Might need to uh, put this in a chuck or something in order to hold it so I can present it to that screw head to the uh, lever nice and square. It's not picking up the thread. Right. Next move. Oh, let's see if I have any more luck with this this way. I've already checked that the thing does thread up. That's looking good. Okay, that's in. Now I just need to get that tightened up. happening. That feels like it. Okay, we have our catch in there now. And I can start putting some things back together. The well, first thing I'm going to do is put my leather back on this camera. The pieces that I've removed from the front. And because of the way I'm going to fit the door, because it's already got its hinge pin in place and I'm not interested in trying to chase that out. Or am I? No, I might do that. We'll, get this, we'll see if we can get this screw loose. What's the worst that can happen? We end up with two broken screws? Yeah, two broken screws. Oh well. I'll drill that out. We'll start with two new screws. These drill bits are very, very sharp. That's just cutting through that steel screw like butter. It's very hard to get them. You've got to make sure that you've got it centered on the screw, which is hard if the surface is not level to start off with. But by angling the drill bit to move it towards centre if it's gone off centre you can get it started and in your way laughing. At least that's the theory. This one's not going to pop out like the other one because the other one the wasn't rusted and it had simply had the head snapped off from whatever abuse the door had suffered. This one was rusted in so it's never going to just spin out easily. I almost certainly have to clear the thread with a tap. Before I can put a new screw in there. So you've only got to go through the thickness of this sheet metal and that is exceptionally thin. Where are we? It's about, about 0.7 I would have said, 0.7 of a millimetre thick.
the only problem with these bits is being carbide they're very hard they've been sharpened really well but they're quite brittle so the chances of snapping off something like this a 1.1 millimeter drill bit as it exits the hole on the other side is certainly quite high in an ideal world you'd have a small drill press you'd have your piece work piece clamped up firmly and you would feed it extremely carefully and it would just be very easy and predictable as you can see I'm not getting many RPMs on this drill Checking to see how far I've gone with that and watching to see that I'm not cutting into the door. There we go, and we snapped off the drill bit as I suspected. In fact, the drill bit snapped into about three pieces. Now that, that brittle, yeah. Oh well, sacrificed the drill bit, but we got the job done. Good. I will put these levers back in place. Now one's got a notch in it, that's where it goes over this pin for the back catch. So you shouldn't get them mixed up if you're doing this job. Right, some adhesive. Good to go. The camera body has been cleaned and the leather has been cleaned and now I'm just going to spread an even layer of adhesive over that leather taking care to get it to the edges and the bare leather Will often suck it up like a sponge and places where there was already adhesive will often not require as much you're dealing with small pieces of leather it's best policy to put a blob of glue onto a piece of paper and then transfer it to the leather or leatherette that you're dealing with on the end of a toothpick for larger pieces like this you can apply your blob of adhesive to the leather directly and then spread it out to the edges as required Okay, that should go. So this is the piece that needs to go on the hinge side. So I'll get that fitted in neatly to the body edges here. Roll that around the corner to the hinge line and tuck that neatly in place. Likewise, it's mate over here. And make sure that they're pressed down firmly, that they fall neatly into the recess.
and at the hinge line this was the part that showed the Zeiss bump problem was at the hinge line here so the leather may never lie down and dead flat again because it's been stretched by those Zeiss bumps but you can usually get a considerably improved appearance compared with what it was like previously see that's, that's nice down there at the hinge line it was quite lumpy previously that's good so the camera body now is ready to have other componentry put back into it this stuff I've had in the ultrasonic cleaner it's been through in solvent and it's been through in detergent and that's removed all the filth that was on there and it means that now it's clean I can inspect it more closely and see what sort of a state it's in now I can see that that arm is a little bit bent it pushed out straight It looks quite good. I'm looking at the ends of the arms because often they are bent at that point if the if the struts have, have suffered some abuse. The inner arms here, inner cross arms, they should be straight. They should be nice and straight like this. The outer arms here and here, they should be quite dished. They should come up to the outside edges and that provides the tension to pop the lock buttons into position. Of course they shouldn't be over bent, that one's slightly over bent so it's a bit tighter and it means that things won't fit neatly. That's looking good. And I want the screws for that and I'll apply some lube some grease. Now I normally just grease the back slots here, the back guides to start off with. I don't put any grease in the front guide there until I'm really putting the door and stuff in place because you just end up taking it all off on your fingers. So I'll just find these screws and put those bellows struts in place. I'll put a little bit of synthetic grease on the rails here on that uh, struts and then this can go into place it only goes in one direction this bar runs against the hit the film cassette cavity the end of the thing and there are four screws and they're all identical in this case one of them is probably uglier than the others because it's had the glue on it. I'm just checking for two nice ones for the film cassette chamber. So this is the second ugliest screw, so we'll use that one in this position. Normally I don't do these screws up tight until I've got everything in position. As often there's a bit of a Bit of wiggling required to get things to sit where you want them to sit. And the two in here. Which are a bit hard for you to see because they're in the top of the picture. And on a good day these run in nice and neatly like that and on a bad day things are a little bit out of line because things are distorted and they do not. Okay so I've got my four screws in position now I can go around and tighten those four screws up.
and that's my struts firmly back in the camera everything squared up and presumably should move nice and smoothly now I just hold my mouth right there we go so I've got to clean up the focus mount which I haven't yet done I see because this has got the felt on the back of it I didn't put this in the ultrasonic cleaner everything else has been cleaned in the cleaner and is sparkly this piece I'm going to do by hand and we'll be back let's see if we can screw together the inner and outer helical if I can achieve that all well and good now I can feel that that's a bit tight which probably means one or two things it might mean that there's still some embedded hard dried grease in there um, and I'm just looking at my alignment marks and I see that my inner helical here is lower than the outer helical so I need to take that back one notch multi-start threads of course you've got to start them in the right position if you want them to align correctly where you want them to align that's it that's aligned correctly there this has got quite a rough feel to it the brass is very dirty colour um, whether that's corrosion or impacted dirt of some sort I don't know what I'm doing is I put a bit of naphtha on there that's that's all and I'm just running these pieces over each other now sometimes the surface roughness is just a little bit of oxidization and running the two brass surfaces over each other with a little bit of very light lubricant because naphtha is exceptionally light as a lubricant um, is good it means that the pieces will rub off those high spots and things are nice and smooth so I'm just running that through its range there that feels good now it's nice and smooth And having rubbed off any high spots like that you can disassemble this and put it back together it'll still run smooth we're not relying on um, a liquid lubricant in there that naphtha has probably evaporated completely by now that's good so some helical grease in there we'll sort that out but while I'm here I want to check this in the mount and I'm pretty sure I had it about that way up let's just check my focus scale ring because that will tell me which way whether I have my double mark at the bottom or at the top and I can see I had it at the bottom which is where I've got it here let's check that that move smoothly well, we know the inners loose moves smoothly on the outer oh yeah the outer does move in there in the mount smoothly too so now that's good some lubrication and assemble that and that will assemble nicely that's good helical grease